All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, in today's webinar, we will be discussing our product EMWorks 2D. We will simulate and analyze unload SRM motor using uh, EMWorks 2D. Before discussing today's agenda, let me introduce uh, ourselves. My name is Asan, and I'm a sales engineer in EMWorks, and we will have our senior product manager, Mahmoud, who will be delivering the technical part of today's webinar. Our agenda for today is the following. I will briefly talk about our solution advantages and benefits in general and what products we offer. Then my colleague will present the technical part. At the end of the technical presentation, I will talk about licensing services and various learning resources offered by EMWorks. The idea of the integration into a CAT tool is truly innovative. What happens conventionally is uh, that if you want to use new simulation software, you have to put tremendous effort and amount of time to learn a new modeling environment first and only after you can start your simulation. Furthermore, usually modeling features inside the simulation softwares are very primitive. It was not meant for complex geometries. So why don't you get the privileges of using the best CAD tools in the world, either is SOLIDWORKS or Inventor? Even if that's not the case and you already use your own CAD tool to model, so now it's time to import an, your model into your simulation tool. But what if you want to change different parameters and geometry uh, and see the result on the spot? Yes, you should export and import a lot of times. You have to switch between the two softwares multiple times to reach the optimum result. So the best is to do modeling and simulation all in one place. Uh, having said that, that was the idea to address this issue. Yeah, we are just inside the cat, your cat tools, such as SolidWorks or Inventor, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, for example, for SolidWorks, which is most arguably the the best CAD tools, or I can say the most powerful CAD tool uh, out there. There were other plugins for other applications like mechanical and structural, but nothing for electromagnetic analysis. We honorably fill the gap and we are offering four different products for our clients or to our clients inside these CAD tools. Our products are gold certified by DESO Systems uh, SOLIDWORKS Corporation since 2008. Uh, so the products, EM products, we are, we are, we offer four products with various add-on covering a wide range of, uh, frequency. Our first product is called EMS, which is used for electric and magnetic field modeling for low frequency applications. It covers many applications like in insulators, cables, bus bars, permanent magnets, actuators, circuit breakers, transformers, and motors. The second product is HFOX, which is used for electromagnetic simulation of RF, microwave, high frequency, and high speed electrical and electronic devices. It covers applications including a wide range of antennas, resonators, filters, connectors, waveguides, and etc. Our third product, uh, product is EMWorks 2D, which offers static analyzers and covers the simulation of planar and axisymmetric geometry geometries. Our latest addition is Motor Wizard, which is a template-based motor design software. It offers analytical and finite element analysis for BLDC and PM motors. In addition to these solvers, we offer few multi-physics solutions like thermal, 
motion, linear statics, and circuits. Uh, in today's webinar, we will utilize EMWorks 2D software to simulate and analyze unload SRM motor using um, EMWorks 2D. I would now request uh, Mahmoud to take over and uh, present uh, the next part of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll take over the presentation from here about the uh, onload analysis of the synchronous reluctance motor using Inworks 2D software. Uh, the, this presentation uh, includes the introduction about the reluctance torque and synchronous reluctance motor and uh, we, we are going to continue talking about the uh, power transformation and DQ parameter which is important to for the simulation process and understand how we can make the maximum torque from uh, a motor and uh, at the end we summarize our uh, uh, our presentation and at the end of the presentation we will answer the question okay most of you know that the electrical motors uh, is the is the machine electrical motors are the machines that uh, transform the electrical energy in forms of voltage and current to the mechanical energy torque uh, and, uh, and speed uh, in electrical machines there are two type of the uh, torque which can be generated by a motor which is the magnetic torque and the reluctance torque uh, the difference here is that in the magnetic torque both sides which is the stator and rotor uh, are in the one form of the magnet it can be artificial or uh, it can be natural magnet which uh, interaction between two magnets create a torque in the other one the, the, ba the base of the generation of torque is the tendency of the flux is to pass through the min the shortest to find the shortest pass to uh, shortest pass uh, to close the flux uh, circle so uh, and uh, in this case we just need to one side of the, uh, the structure to be magnetized either with the natural magnet magnet or with artificial magnet uh, among the electrical machines, some of them uses both of this type of the torque to generate the torque and some of them uses only the one of them. For example, induction machines, surface mount PM machines, non-salient pole synchronous machine and DC machine uh, uh, normally generate the magnetic torque. But uh, and the switch reluctance machine, synchronous reluctance machine and stepper motor uh, works based on the reluctance torque. So and in in the middle we have some structure which uses the both of this torque uh, or generate both of this torque which is interior and inset type of the PM machines and salient pole synchronous machines and some of the uh, uh, machines like a hybrid stepper motors. Okay, uh, here we, our focus is on the reluctance motor. There is two type of two main type of the reluctance motor. One of them synchronous reluctance motor and another one is called switch reluctance motor. What's the difference between them? The synchronous reluctance motor is the one that has the stator similar to the other types of the motor like uh, induction or PM machine. Uh, but the switch reluctance motor has a different type of the structure in the stator. Uh, in terms of the rotor, uh, the rotor of the synchronous reluctance motor and the switch reluctance motor has the purpose of generating the some saliency in the structure to make sure that uh, we have a, a different pass for fluxes so uh, in general the switch reluctance machine is excited with the dc pulses but the synchronous reluctance machine is excited with the three um, three-phase sinusoidal current. Uh, um, here, our focus is about uh, is uh, is on synchronous reluctance motor, and I'm going to talk about this machine and how to generate the torque in this machine and how to simulate in this machine in uh, finite element software. So, uh, uh, the main uh, objective of this webinar is to how to simulate 
unload analysis of this synchronous direct transmission in finite element software. And the main challenge, as uh, you know, it's the how to apply a proper combination of the three phase current to achieve maximum current per ampere. In this case, what is important is to understand uh, that how or uh, how we are going to determine the uh, determine the phase uh, angle sh uh, uh, phase angle of the three phases to create the maximum torque. Okay, uh, before going to the, that part of the simulation, I'm going to talk about this, that the synchronous, this is the uh, synchronous reluctance motor equation in DQ system. As you see that we have the VDVQ uh, equation and the torque equation, which mainly is related to the lambda D and the lambda Q which they are, they are, uh, they depend to the LD and LQ. So uh, shortly, in brief, uh, shortly, briefly, that uh, the torque of the machine, it's very important. It depends on the LD, LQ of the machine, as well as the ID, IQ. And if you do some uh, calculation, some mathematical calculation, you will see that to generate the maximum torque, what you need to do is to, to make sure that all the time, ID is equal IQ. So this is the only condition for you to make sure uh, that the I, uh, if, if you meet the voltage uh, requirement, you, you are not exceeding the voltage uh, uh, limitation, then you only need to make sure that ID is equal IQ. And this condition make sure that we are gonna generate the maximum torque. But how we are gonna apply this one to uh, the machine when we are doing simulation because in simulation in the in so finite element software there is no such a thing as IDIQ and we are working with the, the phase A B C uh, and we need to understand how we simulate this machine so let's look at it I have to understand uh, and to transform the, our values uh, from DQ in like DQ system to uh, ABC system or vice versa, we use the part transform or in our case we are going to use the inverse part transform. In this case what we need to know we have to uh, understand where is our uh, vectors and we define our vector. The normal way to define the vectors uh, and to define this part transform is that uh, we have to find the angle between the D axis of the DQ system and the phase A axis, okay? Uh, of course, there is another type of the DQ park system. You can define another type, but here we are gonna focus in this one, and I'm gonna explain how you do this one. The other one is the same, just uh, you need to play a little bit with the currents and the equation might be a little bit different, okay? Uh, and uh, the important, I just want to mention the important thing for the DQ transform is this angle which is called theta and is the angle between theta D which is the D axis uh, and theta A which is the uh, phase A axis. Okay, to understand and to apply this system in a, in a synchronous reluctance machine, we need to know what are, where are the DQ axis of the motor. Okay. Uh, uh, the, here there are two cases we are I'm, I'm showing for you two different types of the motor normally D axis uh, and the Q axis uh, Q axis is the middle of the pass which is the provide the shortest uh, sorry to provide the highest reluctance uh, to for a mot uh, for the flux passes if you see here if the flux want to pass through this pass it's gonna pass through the, this this stuff which is called barriers. While in the D axis, we have the very straight pass like this one. So D axis can be considered any of these part, middle of these poles, and then the Q axis will be 90 degree electrically shifted. Uh, and so as you see, it's determining the D and Q axis is very simple and straightforward for this kind of machine. 
the thing that might be a little bit uh, confusing is the phase axis uh, which I realized that the, in, in a lot of paper nobody mentioned such a thing and it's a little bit confusing but after a lot of some works I realized that phase A axis is the middle of the phase uh, the first group coil of the phase A if you see for example I put it uh, like a three different cases here in this case you see that uh, this is the phase A go and a, uh, the small a means the return of the phase A the, and this middle is considered the phase A axis. The same thing here. This is the distributed winding you see here. And he, this middle is considered as a phase A axis. And uh, another case, the uh, double layer distributed winding with a short pitch. You can see that uh, very simply this here can be considered uh, uh, as a phase A axis. See, uh, it may not be mathematically uh, uh calculator but uh, it's very simple you can understand the concept by looking at these pictures okay so i'm gonna now go to the simulation and show you how we are gonna uh, switch how we are gonna apply this concept that we talked about it uh, in the simulation and then we are gonna show show the result the, uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to use, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use the EMWork 2D software, which is a multi-purpose software to analyze the uh, different structure. And this EMWork 2D provides, it's a finite element package that provides you uh, electromagnetic simulation for the, uh, any 2D structure. Uh, it's fully embedded inside the solid work. It, it uh, gives the capa several capabilities, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, coupling to circuit, uh, coupling to motion, and uh, the, the result uh, has been validated many times with uh, many of our customers. And uh, the, in terms of application, it can be used for any type of application like actuator, like a bus bars, magnetic gears, electrical motors, bushing, capacitors. So it has, it's, a, it's a full range of the application which can be simulated in this software. So, but in this, in our cases, we are gonna uh, simulate these two motors. One of them is the four HP synchronous reluctance motor with uh, barriers, straight barriers like this and the single layer winding. Another one is that this double layer wind, uh, it's the 7.5 horsepower synchronous reluctance motor, uh, uh, which has the double layer winding and the, the uh, form of the barriers is a little bit different uh, and it's more like curvature rather than the straight uh, like line like this. Okay. Uh, let me switch here from to the simulation. Okay, let's get to the first simulation case. This is the four horsepower machine we discussed before, uh, and it's, it has a 36 slot, uh, single uh, single layer winding, and uh, four poles. You can understand the f this machine has four poles by seeing the number of the patterns here. So I'm not gonna go into the how you set up a simulation in our software. Uh, we have a lot of uh, good tutorial video in the YouTube, our YouTube channels and our uh, website. You can refer to it to find out how to do it. But I'm just shortly and briefly, uh, you determine the type of the study you want. For example, magnetostatic, transient magnetic. Normally for the electrical machine, we use these two. Uh, and uh, check the uh, necessary parameters like compute circuit parameters if you needed to calculate inductance and back EMF or voltage. You can, if you have the motion, you can couple it with the motion, determine the speed that you are uh, working with it, um, determine the moving components, motion bands, as well as the, the 
the coordinate system and the length of the machine. So once you did this one, uh, the defining the whole pre, uh, simulation is very simple. Uh, uh, you apply the material to uh, uh, your components. For example, here we applied the M27 to state uh, to rotor and uh, stator structure, stainless steel I applied to the shaft. Uh, and uh, applying the material is easy. Click here, you will uh, have access to uh, the big list of the materials in our software. And we have the copper for the uh, coils. Uh, this is for material. Then you will have the access to the, uh, sorry, not, sorry. Uh, then you define the boundary condition, uh, uh, determine the where do you want to calculate torque and force. For example, in our cases, we were, are interested in knowing the torque and force in, this, in the rotor. Uh, if you need to apply mesh control uh, and you can do it, you to find, uh, we automatically do the meshing, but if you want to apply finer mesh some places, in, you can do it. For example, in this case, I applied the mesh control to this area of the air gap, which is the important area. And uh, at the end, you define the phases. I define three phases, phase A, B, C. And for each phase, we have the go pass and the return pass. If you like, see here, go pass and return pass, you can define the number of the turns and the wire size here uh, and the direction of the current positive or negative uh, and uh, this is what we do uh, and we run the simulation so as i said uh, if you are interested to in knowing how to set up a motor simulation you can go and check our youtube channel we have very nice tutorial in this case and you can do it I'm go just going to dive into the result and discuss the result with you. I did uh, like a couple of simulation. The first simulation I did, I wanted to see the inductance of the, how the inductance of the, this machine uh, is changing uh, at different uh, rotor position. So what I did, I wanted to, the main important inductance here is the uh, self inductance of the each phase. What I did, I applied the, uh, 18 ampere which is the rated current uh, to the phase A and the phase B and C I considered as a, a zero so I ran the simulation and I checked the result this is the uh, if you are want to see it uh, I have this result inductance versus the uh, rotor angle uh, which is in the degree and uh, here you see the inductance is changing similar to switch reluctance motor we have a uh, maximum inductance minimum inductance and the slope of this inductance which is important for the torque generation in this case you see the two inductance is like a 45 millimeter uh, 45 millihenry maximum and it's reaches to 10 millihenry in the minimum case uh, uh yeah that's it so here uh, you can check this one. the other uh, i did another simulation with the same story in this but, but here i applied half of the current nine million uh, nine ampere and the phase b and c zero uh let's check the result again okay i want to see the rotor angle here and the index uh, here and the uh, self inductance phase AA yeah you see here the difference here you see it's the waveform is the same but the value has changed the maximum value was right like 45 millihenry now is 70 millihenry and the minimum is 20 the previous one was 10 millihenry oh uh, this is a very important no, uh, uh, thing uh, point that you have to remember that the uh, saturation has a significant effect in the, on this machine and uh, you know that the inductance is changing significantly with uh, this uh, saturation phenomenon and uh, you see here that uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you that uh, this uh, but uh, and this difference between max and mean is very important in the uh, torque generation of this machine uh, and there is something called the uh, saliency ratio which is related I believe it's the ratio of the uh, in DQ inductance uh, d axis to 
two axes and like this. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm just saying to let you know that there is something called like this. And this is completely based on this differences between the minimum and maximum. So uh, one point from these two simulations that you have to learn that inductance is very important in this machine and it changed significantly with the current. Let's go to the sim load simulation. Uh, uh, for the sim load simulation, I run, I, I set the speed as a 1500 RPM. So I wanted to run the simulation and uh, the main parameter is to apply, how to apply the current. Uh, the free, as I mentioned, the speed is like a 1500, and then uh, we have like a 50 ampere, uh, sorry, 50 hertz frequency, and 18 ampere uh, is the maximum current. I set uh, this uh, phase shift uh, randomly to this value, and uh, phase B and C will be shifted by, sorry, by. Uh, uh, my uh, 120 degree and uh, I ran the simulation let's check the result you see that in this case the torque is around the average torque is around 18 Newton meter which is quite uh, good for this machine but you can notice that this machine has very high torque ripple so uh, this is the the torque we generate with 18 ampere and that current angle let's go to the next simulation is the same simulation but the, there is a difference that here the, this phase angle is different so i set this angle to generate the maximum torque uh, and i'm gonna tell you how i set this angle you see abc uh, we just need to know what is phase a okay and then the BC is going to be shifted with uh, 120 degree. Let's check the torque here. Yes. Okay. The torque here. The, va the average torque is, here is the 28. And it's very interesting. You know, because... Uh, the previous one it was like uh, 18 this one is like 27 28 it's uh, so the current value is the same the frequency is the same but you see that the one angle has a significant effect on the performance of the, this machine so how we determine this angle to get the maximum torque okay so i'm going to explain to you simple it's back to the our uh, presentation here there is this is the procedure okay what you have to do first determine the phase a axis and then phase d axis and then you calculate the theta which i discussed during the part transform and the part transformation here the theta is theta d minus theta a so you do this one for the initial position then set the id equal to iq which is going to be called to im right pro, uh, divided by sq2 in im in our cases is like 18 and you can calculate id iq then using the part transformation you transform the idq and calculate the iabc in the initial position you get these values okay then then you calculate the phase A current angle using this simple equation. So, uh, phi uh, is equal to sin, uh, arc sine of the I over, uh, I, A over I max. Okay, so just uh, please don't be confused. This is the phase A axis and this is the phase A current angle. So this, these are the different. This is the one we determine based on the configuration. This is the one we apply to the current. Okay, so once you have the phase A, we can calculate the phase B and C angle by just simply uh, uh, subtracting by minus 120 degree and minus, under two, minus 240 degree. And then run the simulation. So let me show in the simulation what are these meanings. Okay, we... Uh, let's back here so the first thing determine the theta 
d axis i mentioned about the theta d axis here or here or here or here it can be considered as a theta d axis for simplification we consider this one okay here is the theta d let's consider here as a zero degree angle uh, as a reference okay so here pro uh, based on what i know it's going to be around 45 degree and this 45 degree it's in the mechanical degree and it's going to be around uh, uh, multiplied by the pole pair it's going to be 90 electrical degree so theta d is 90 electrical degree let's go for the phase a the phase a let's see this is the a plus and this is the a minus it, we can st the t uh, select any of these coils okay this one or this one but uh, let's if this is a plus and a minus then here the middle of this one sorry the middle of this one it's it's the phase uh, a axis you see that these three was the positive these are the negative one now the middle is here it's uh if you calculate one two three four five six it's going to be 60 mechanical degrees and here is the theta a uh, which is the phase a axis and it's 60 degree again multiplied by the number of pole pairs it's going to be 120. you calculated this one so uh, and uh, you have the current which is the 18 uh, ampere and you calculate idiq we calculated this one theta is gonna be theta d minus theta a we calculate iabc and we at the end we get to the uh, ang current angle of phase a we set this uh, current angle yeah sorry we set this current angle and then uh, we use the we apply that one to here in the phase a definition and the phase b and c as i mentioned is just shifted by the minus by 120 degrees just note that that uh, there we are calculating the current sorry the uh, the angle and here we need to apply the time uh, transforming the current to uh, sorry angle to the time it's easy we have uh, 50 hertz that means a full period is gonna be 20 millisecond and 20 millisecond is equivalent to 360 degrees so you can do the mass and reach to this value so you apply and uh, this angle and you can make sure that uh, you can be sure that you are gonna get the maximum the other, uh, other result you can also uh, have access here energy resistance flux linkage of the phases induced voltage or core loss you can see uh, it's up to you what kind of result you are looking for for example you can see here the core loss is like a 50 round 50 for the uh, stator and round 20 for the rotor so uh, that's the simulation for this motor okay let's move to other motor this is another motor 7.5 horsepower same as before four pole 36 uh, slot uh, and double layer winding uh, we did the same simulation here i did uh, the let me show the result I, uh, because everything is the same uh, in the inductance that i was showing previously here you can see that the inductance is changing it's the same it's, uh, here it's like just i forgot it's like a, it reaches to around 90 millihenry and the minimum is like a 55 millihenry and uh, then if you reduce the current and check now the current inductance you can see phase a inductance uh, the inductance is changing it's from 90 reach to 7 so 155 and the, the minimum is like like 90 the previous one the 90 was the maximum so you see the change of the inductance is a different current again i run two simulation with one with the random uh just without any um 
not the, it's, it's not exactly ra- random, but it's different than the maximum current. You may, if you put random, you you have it, you may get the negative torque or some nonsense. But uh, uh, here I tried to just show you the not being not precise is going to cost you the uh, the wrong result in terms of the value. And uh, I uh, did the maximum torque uh, again, uh, maximum current uh, uh, simulation. Sorry, torque, uh, and you see here the torque reaches the 35 newton meter, is much more bigger than the previous one. And so uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the same story uh, that we had. Just to note that uh, here uh, the d axis here is this one, as you see uh, the position of the rotor here with the previous one is different. So you may not, you may may take it into consideration. So let's uh, that's it. Uh, the, this is the whole simulation. Let me back to the. Uh, final part, uh, let's uh, recap, yeah, you saw that uh, the inductance for the first machine was changing and uh, uh, this is the torque that we got at the maximum torque around 25, uh, we had this uh, result in the, in the, for the core loss, uh, 50 and 20 for the rotor side. Then we had this one for the 7.5 horsepower machine, which uh, the inductance is, as you see, is changing uh, significantly, and the torque of the round uh, maybe 35, uh, almost 40, uh, and the core loss again is bigger because uh, 80 and on 30 is the throttle core loss. Uh, that's it for the whole simulation. Uh, you saw in this simulation how we run the how uh, we can simulate uh, uh, a synchronous reluctance motor you saw it uh, and we learn how what the DQ model is that and how this model can help us to determine the uh, angles to calculate the maximum torque uh, thank you very much uh, uh, I'm going before answering the question I'm gonna hand over the simulation to my colleague and then we will answer the question after my uh, after my presentation. My my colleague finished the presentation. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, Mahmoud, and thank you everyone for bearing with us. And I hope you have learned enough uh, from this webinar so far. Uh, let me briefly touch up on the licensing structure offered by EMWorks. We offer three different programs, commercial, academic, and startup programs. Each program has its own benefits and requirements. Uh, within the commercial program, we offer perpetual licenses, while our licensing structure is usually annually based on the rest of the programs. We have a combination of free and paid licenses for students, academics, mentors, lecturers, and professors based on the program they choose. For startup programs, we offer we are offering a very interesting plan for paying in installment. Uh, EMWorks uh, offer various free learning resources. With the software purchase or trial, user can access the demo viewer section of the software through which they can access many predefined model examples and tutorials. In addition, we have a regular, regular uh, webinar series on trending electromagnetic topics. Moreover, we regularly post several application notes, blogs, and videos on our web page, uh, social media, and YouTube channel. Uh, we also offer paid customized training sessions to all users of Microsoft uh, as our EMWorks software. Uh, our support service is the strongest point that I can mention in this presentation. We always uh, support you uh, before and after sales, that is including one-to-one -one web demo sessions to shorten your learning curve. 
or even do benchmarking with the model that you shared with us. Also, we are offering consultation and design engineering services, even come up with a new design as per your requirements or refine and optimize your existing design. Uh, in line with our engineering and consultation services, and since it's a motor related topic, it's worth to mention that we are providing comprehensive motor design, optim motor design optimizing and consultation services for our clients, supported by our motor expert team. Uh, these are only a couple of our respected clients. These big names are coming from different industries showing our comprehensive and extensive solution. I encourage everyone to try our software and experience its capabilities. We offer two weeks of free access to a trial license. Visit our webpage, go to our contact us page, fill in your information and submit your request and we will contact you. I would like to thank you all on behalf of EMWorks for participating in this webinar, feel free to contact me after this webinar to get more information on our products. Thank you and have a great day.